Hello, and welcome to Pro Tour Season 2 coverage for the MSEM format. Today, we're going to be watching the loser semifinals match between Wonger and Just Nobody. Both of these players are in variants of Red, Black, Adir, and Survivor. Wonger's deck is splashing green for some enchantment hate and a Master of Balance inside, while Just Nobody is splashing white for a Soul Sister and also access to Ozen from the side. So, this matchup is kind of dependent on who goes first, which in this case, just nobody being first seed uh, gets to play first. So this matchup is very much in his favor. Um, Monger does, to my knowledge, have more main board interaction than JN does, however, and that might play a factor here. But in general, it comes down to um, if either player has Egg of Avarice and it ends up resolving, things get dicey really quick. Well, while these players are deciding, essentially, like uh, key, like whether to go first and uh, all the keeps and such, let's look at the deck lists. So just nobody has four pieces of hand attack main, um, but the, I guess Unmaster could be counted as hand attack in this fast... Uh, like in this fast matchup where tempo is everything. So pretty reasonable interaction. And then the rest uh, of JN's deck is essentially um, devoted to turboing out the Adarin combo. Chikao is an interesting piece main board, um, but it aids the grindiness of the deck. Uh, meanwhile, let's look at Monger's deck list here. Meanwhile, you can see Monger only has one on Maskers and doesn't have any hand attack at all. But Monger has a tutor in the form of Forbidden Truths, has Vibrant Rapture for additional instant speed combo routes and to potentially um, kill opposing creatures. And then from the side has three Nature's Claims for opposing uh, uh, eggs. Uh, Seal the Tomb also does a lot in this matchup. JN. Uh, has sealed the tombs as well. Um, more hand attack, or three more pieces of hand attack. Ozen, which is strong here because it's also another thing that can grab egg. Um, and Deathless Siege is very good if it ends up like, if JN ends up being able to um, uh, seal the tomb, Monger's uh, Adiran Survivor, but is behind in terms of the board. Deathless Siege uh, gives JN the edge in a fair game. So both players have drawn their initial hands. JN is keeping his first seven. Or is this the first seven? Actually, no, never mind. Both players are actually mulliganing. So this is the first. So JN is keeping at six, as is Monger. So JN starting off with the red pain land. If this is a devouring flame turn one, no, unmasker. So and we see Monger's hand is. Gift, Forbidden Truths, and two Autumnal Watch. Um, probably grabbing Gift here. Yeah. And Monger's life total is definitely going to take a beating here. What with the uh, JN having this Unmasker, Monger's only blockers being things he wants to keep, and also Monger having uh, Shock Fetches as his only lands. So probably going to crack Shardstone Rift play Autumnal Watch, and then hope to use it as a blocker for Unmasker. Yep, but in order to do that, Monger has to bolt himself. Again, going first here gives JN so much of an edge, because it allows JN to dictate the pace of this game to such a large extent. So draws a card, is thinking about something. Um, and that's something is whether or not to play the shock fetch untapped, it seems. So Grim Bastion coming out. Hasn't cracked it yet, interestingly enough. Attacking. And Monger takes the two, doesn't block with Optimal Watch. Interesting. Um, keeping the shock fetch up maybe means that JN has a Darren Survivor and doesn't want it to die to but does Monger have removal that can kill it? I don't think so. And it comes in tapped anyways. 
Okay, uh, another unmasker coming out here, grabbing forbidden truths. Yeah. <sighs> and another land for Monger. Oof. But yeah, Monger's only turn to play here is really just play autumnal autumnal watch, which like autumnal watch is fine, but then like. It's not where you want to be without having any other pieces. Gift and Forbidden Truths, uh, if this game does end up going like a little... Like, Jayan has pressure here, but if this game ends up going like a little bit too long, um, Gift and Forbidden could potentially give Monger to the edge to just find the combo kill. But also, like, getting both of those back will cost two life, playing Gift costs two life, and if Monger is going to continue to not block, then that's a big hammering on Monger's life total right here. But let's see what Monger drew. Maybe Monger drew something impactful. Oh, okay, going, just going to main. And Monger is swinging with the Automobile Watch? Okay. Um. Yeah, okay, and Jayan is just taking it. I'm not sure. I guess Monger is planning to sack Autumnal Watch anyways. No, okay, it just goes to end. Yeah, I don't know how to I don't know how to read that because I thought Monger would prefer to have it as a blocker here versus these unmaskers, but I guess not. And so Monger could have like chosen not to play the Automotor Watch here and could have like gotten something back at end step and then have had it to play next turn. But I guess Monger said the board presence was more important. And JN uh, cracks the shock fetch for Cradle, which is another great tool in long matchups. Okay, so JN plays his own Gift of the Phoenix, discarding a shock fetch. And even though JN is at lower life total here, um, Jayan pretty has a pretty commanding lead, so I think we'll probably just swing out, play aggressively, force Monger to play reactively rather than proactively. Um, plays the shock fetch untapped. Okay, interesting. I'm not sure why Jayan keeps playing these shock fetch. Okay, cracking it immediately. Does Jayan have any like one mana interaction main board that Jayan could have been holding? that shock fetch up for. Um, but anyways, tapping three for, yeah, oh, two for young, oh yeah, already played one, paid one for Gift of the Phoenix, never mind. So young necromancer. So now, yeah, this makes it a lot harder for, and Monger just takes the four, that's gonna hurt. And yeah, again, this young Necro is another just strong piece in the grindy matchup. And I guess Mon Monker not cracking that shock fetch. Um, yeah, Monker not cracking that shock fetch on his upkeep is an interesting because I, we know Monker has one more land in hand. Um, and I would have thought that Monker would have wanted to try and like draw again or like maybe was was planning on like cracking the shock fetch depending on what land or like what card monger drew I'm, I'm trying to think of situations here anyways cracking the shock fetch now gets a swamp okay that's one step closer to turning the pain land off yep okay pain land officially off tapping two to get back Forbidden Truths? Oh no, playing a Forbidden Truths from Monger's own hand. Okay. What it okay, Monger is empty-handed, but is getting to tutor a card. Let's see what it is. And a Darren Survivor. Okay. And just plays the Darren Survivor. And I guess next turn of Monger. Uh, this is the problem, because discarding that land means, or like Forbidden Truths requiring Monger to discard a card means that, um, 
Monger's line, Monger's lines next turn are kind of limited. And Monger's just going to go down to six, okay. Whew. JN doesn't really have reach to my knowledge, so. Or Monger's going to go down to four, actually. Oh, God. And Monger has, and JN has his own optimal watch and another unmasker. And his unmasker on an empty hand. So, the, the, really what this is saying is, I have the board to just kill you next turn. What did Monger draw, is the question. Monger can get back, give to the Phoenix, and cast it, notably. But then, that's the end of Monger's turn. Monger playing Blood Artist from hand. So, Monger's only chance is to hit a Darren Survivor. Um, off, basically, is, Monger's only chance is to hit a Darren Survivor off of this. Or like, Monger has two, two chances to hit a Darren Survivor, essentially. That's a nature's claim. That is not what Monger wanted. Okay, and I guess Monger can sack another Autonal Watch to itself and then try to get a second hit, basically. And Monger saying was kind of hoping for a creature there. Yeah, that would have been nice. Um, sacrificing Autonal Watch to get another hit. And does get a Darren back, notably. That is important. So Monger has one more hit after this to potentially go off. Baron Desolation. Um, does, and Mon oh, that, that's good. Okay, that's very important. Because Baron Desolation lets uh, Monger recur a Darren Survivor one more time after this. Um, okay. Let's see it. Egg of Avarice from the top. Um, does this do it, actually? Actually, yeah, I think this might do it, right? Because Monger cracks the uh, the shock fetch, uh, gets a land, brings back a Darren Survivor, um, casts a uh, egg, sacrifices a Darren Survivor to find another Darren Survivor, um, and then just infinitely loops a Darren Survivors with Blood Artist and kills JN. And JN has one card in hand. Yeah, so Darren Survivor comes back. Can JN? Oh! JN, can JN cradle in response? And so stop Monger here? Oh, that would be an insane play. Like, cradle. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't have a sorcery speed rider. So JN could, in so Monger will gain 10 life, and then JN can steal one of Monger's Adaran survivors. Oh no, Monger won't even gain, Monger will gain like 3, 4 life? No, but Monger will, no, Monger will still be taking damage, so it'll, dra will, wait, will it drain JN enough times? Actually, that's, um, yeah, actually, wait, I think the drain will get JN before Cradle can turn on. Okay, and then Crack Egg on Survivor. Search for Survivor. I, I think Monger is now realizing that Cradle of Corruption probably puts... Like, actually, Monger's probably just working it out, but I think Monger kills Jayen, like, right as... Or like right before JN can cradle of corruption and potentially interrupt. And really Monger doesn't, it's not like Monger has another option. Monger's like all in at this point. So Monger either lo loses right here, right now, um, or wins. I, and I wonder what Monger's thinking of. Like Monger said, hmm, but I think the only like right line here is egg the Adarin to find another Adarin. 
and then just, I guess Mom is trying to work it out in his head before playing it out, but I think just play it out. And then if some, because Monger doesn't have any way to interact with it. So if JN does it, he does it. And if it turns out that Monger can kill JN before hand, then so much the better. Yep, egg on survivor to find survivor. And drain one. And Monger searched for Ash Speaker and went to end? Yeah, you're going to have to explain that one to me because I am very confused. I guess the thought is like JN can't attack because if JN attacks, Monger blocks with everything, JN loses six, JN loses. But then like... Unless I did the math wrong. Oh, Twilight Blade. Yeah, unless I did the math wrong, a Darren survivor would have let Monger just win. And responses. What does Monger have? Monger can Ash speak or something, I guess. Yep, so cracking the Ash speaker on... <laughs> Face, okay. So basically, two damage to Jayan's face and then drains and gets a Durin back. I guess the problem here now is that with Twilight Blade, um, any any life that Monger may gain from Blood Artist is negated by Twilight Blade. Um, I don't know how those would well, those triggers stack in a way that would kill Jayan first. I am not certain about that. But I think J the right move for Jayan is just to swing out, right? I don't think Monger can survive here. Now that Jane's resolve is Twilight Blade. Yep. And so Monger concedes. Um, and we're moving to game two. So from the sideboard, um, so Seal the Tomb, I think, is just a hose in this matchup, so I think it's definitely coming in. Um, Oz, I don't know what, because lots of, okay, because I think Jayan could literally bring everything in here and it would be good in some situation, other than maybe Zetla. But I think Zet, he, but I think it depends on what Jayan, like Jayan's perspective on this matchup. Um, I mean, okay, so thinking of it from the perspective of going second, Maybe Ozen wouldn't be good because you wouldn't be able to Ozen in time to respond to Egg, since you need to be on the play for that. So maybe Hand Attack instead. Um, so maybe like Hand Attack and stuff to play a more reactive game. I don't know, but in general, like I think like lots of J and Sideboard looks attractive in this matchup. So I'm finding it difficult to evaluate what will or won't come in. Meanwhile, for Monger. I don't think the Unmaskers are very... Or not, I'm sorry. I think Unmasker is good here. I don't think the Master Balance is very good here, frankly. Nature's Claim is very good versus Egg, and then not much else. In a pinch, you can kill your own Egg, egg or kill a, a Petal Token from Rapture to gain some life, which if this matchup gets grindy is fine. Um, Seal the Tomb is def definitely coming because it's a house in this matchup. Uh... I don't know why the I guess Chima Sky is just like copy number nine of a blood artist, which as we've seen, if this matchup goes grindy is pretty good, so maybe that might come in. Yeah, again, I think like plot I don't know, stolen secret seems a little sus, but plausibly unmasker, nature's claim, seal the tomb, Chima Scourge, and some number is kind is kind of what I'm predicting. But I'm but again, I think. Yeah, I'm just finding it hard to evaluate like how 
because all of these seem like good cards for the deck. But then I think it comes down to like, what does the 60 look like once you swap these cards in? Because I think they're all just like little cogs in a much bigger puzzle. And I'm finding it and I'm finding it difficult to try and like envision how each of these would slot in to the deck's game plan. So we're starting game two off already. Monger is on the play since he lost. Starts off turn one with a pain land into Octonal Watch. Meanwhile, Jan is gonna just bolt himself, which I assume means that Shock Vet is searching for a pain land. Yep, there it is. And what is Jayan playing on turn one? Gift of the Phoenix. So uh, Jayan losing a quarter of his life total turn one, but discarding a Darren, which is huge. Um, so Jayan kind of like playing his hand, both like not his entire hand, but like playing his hand both literally and figuratively to an extent. And Monger's like, okay, I will chip in with damage if you want to if you want to like put down your life total that much. Um, main two. Okay, cracking the shock fetch as well. Notably, both players kept at seven. Okay, and Painland pings Monger again. And egg. And then immediately cracking egg, sacking Octomal Watch for. A Darren. Okay, so Monger's just trying to be like, okay, a Darren, and then crack egg next turn for a Darren, or if Monger has a Darren in hand, uh, a sack outlet, and then just try to go off. Honestly, um, if Monger has land, blood artist variant, sack outlet, and then it like, and just has that line, Monger just wins next turn. Of course, Jayan could have hand attack and then just, or some like interaction and stop that, but yeah. Okay, plays on Masker. Revealing Twilight Blade, Gift, Departed Evangel. So I think Twilight Blade is the grab here, unless I'm mistaken. That or Gift, because Gift could potentially dig into something dangerous. Um, like a sack out, let's say. And then Twilight Blade does enable... Actually, Twilight Blade is, is the grab, I think, because if Monker top decks a, a, a sack outlet, Twilight Blade just wins uh, Monger the game. Yep, and, and Jayan saw that same line, so Jayan's grabbing Twilight Blade here. And Jayan plays his own Autumnal Watch right here. Okay. Um, so Monger is swinging in with a Darren Survivor. This is interesting because uh, if Jayan just blocks here... Um, or wait, what did, was the land that Monger had in hand a Shock Fetch? Huh. Okay. I forgot. I forget what land Monger had in hand. But if Monger had a shock fetch in hand, uh, then Jayan blocking there could have uh, just stopped Monger from searching for anything with egg. But again, I think it's a, a case of like doubt Monger would attack unless Monger knew. So gift to the Phoenix. It's, uh, basically trashing Departed Evangel, um, which, you know, is fine because Mon can play Departed Evangel from Grave anyways. Yeah, you can see, like, both players are playing, like, very fast and loose with their life totals here. Because even though they're both ag aggro decks technically, it really comes down to if you can land a combo first, then life total just straight up does not matter. And Monger cracking egg on a Darren, presumably to get another Darren. Yep, getting another Darren. Swamp for Departed Evangel from Grave. Yep. Okay. So I'm assuming that Gift didn't get in Monger anything exciting. And then playing Shardstone Rift tapped. So Monger did have the Shock Fetch after all. 
And I think playing the shock fetch tapped here may have been a mistake. Because, okay, so if JN has sealed the tomb here, what Monger could have done is in response shock fetch a Darren trigger, bring a Darren back. Um, and the two life, again, playing fast and lo loose with life totals here is very much acceptable. Um, Oh, so JN has his own egg. Okay. Um, and yeah, this opens up a lot more lines, so I can definitely see. Uh, especially because JN has an Adiran in Grave from earlier. Um, oh, going to combat may be a bad, maybe the wrong move. Swinging out with everything is, I would almost say, definitely the wrong move. But okay. Uh, Monger's taking it for some reason. Egg is sorcery speed, so I don't know. Okay, so JN um, going to sack Unmasker, presumably to get another Adarian. But hmm, JN might be a turn too slow. Or actually, what is JN getting? Is, is JN getting Ash Speaker, presumably, maybe to kill? No. Ah, Soul Warden. Okay, Soul Warden is a good call here, because, so Monger's going to untap here, um, Sack Departed Evangel to get a Sack Outlet, uh, and then if Monger has another land, Monger can get back and cast Twilight Blade, and then just loop uh, a Darren Survivor to drain JN for a bunch. So what's going to happen here is Soul Warden will prevent JN from dying. Monger can gain an arbitrarily large amount of life though. And then on JN's turn, JN can egg for a Darren Survivor and then try to go off with his own Autumnal Watch. Monger swinging out for three, for four, and yeah, JN just has to take it. And then main two here probably Egg Evangel for um, Optimal Watch or Devouring Flame, probably Optimal Watch now. Um, if Mo and then if Monger has a land, crack the Shock Fetch, get back Twilight Blade, play Twilight Blade. If Monger doesn't have a land, this becomes like a lot weirder. Oh, Monger has Twilight Blade in hand anyways. Okay, okay, that changes this a lot. Um, so, can Monger Ash Speaker and then kill Soul Warden? Actually, so, oh, actually, so what Monger can do here is get Autonomal Watch, and then if Monger has any copy of Ash Speaker in his deck, um, he just, uh, does the does the loop uh, with Octonal Watch? Um, again, yeah. Does it like so? Gets a bunch of cards, uh, impulse drawn from the top of Monger's deck, and then as soon as Monger hits Ash Speaker, uses Ash Speaker to kill Soul Warden, and then just continues the loop. Except now JN doesn't have a way to gain life, and then JN dies. What did Monger sack here again? Oh, Monger sacked a Darren Survivor. Okay. Free up. Uh, uh, so Monger, okay, so instead of um, doing the uh, Autonomal Watch and then get Ash Speaker through that, Monger decided to just get Ash Speaker straight up, which I think is a mistake because now um, next turn, JN can untap and get something with Egg. Oh, and Monger's going to kill Autonal Watch. Interesting. Um, the problem is, um, next turn, JN untaps. Unless Monger has sealed the tomb here. Um, JN untaps. Egg of Avarice on uh, Adiran Survivor. Bring back the other Adiran Survivor. Get Autonal Watch. And then the whole thing happens anyways. And then as soon as um, 
JN hits a blood artist effect, JN wins. Or does JN? JN needs, oh wait. No, actually, so JN doesn't have a way to kill yet. And Twilight Blade is only creatures you control. So there's no, actually, there's, so there's no. No, yeah, okay, so, so if JN hits Twilight Blade, JN wins in that scenario. So yeah, Jane is going to Egg of Avarice, a Duran Survivor. Monger still has one, can crack the Shock Fetch, and then uh, seal it to him, if, Monger ha is that, if that's one of Monger's last two cards in hand. Okay, and yep, getting Autonal Watch. Um, a Darren trigger? Didn't, didn't bring back the other Darren. Huh, did I miss something? Did JN just forget? Because if JN just forgot that trigger, then that's really bad for JN. Because in that case, um, well, JN could just sack Soul Warden and then bring back both of the, um, no, but without, Without Soul Warden, Jane doesn't have a way to offset this. But I guess Jane hasn't played a land this turn, so Jane could just play a creature here and then go off? Okay, playing a Darren Survivor from hand. So now Jane loops until Jane hits both a Black Land and a Blood Artist effect and then wins the game, as far as I know. Oh, and Monger. Oh, okay. So, a Monger cracking his shock fetch now. Is this the seal to tomb? Yeah, so Monger was hoping to uh, do the same cradle trick that JN was, had the access to game one, but it doesn't work. And JN wins uh, uh, the loser semifinals. Monger's unfortunately out of the tournament. JN will go on to play Cyber in uh, Losers Finals. Cyber was uh, the person who sent JN to Losers Bracket in the first place. So that'll be an interesting rematch to see.